Hi everyone, welcome back to Med School EU. My name is Andre, and in today's educational video, we are going to discuss the homeostasis and the control of glucose within our body. Now, before we discuss how glucose will be controlled by our body, specifically the concentration of glucose, we must talk about what is the structure of glucose and how it is going to be transported and stored within our body. So this is a molecule of glucose. It has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Of course, the, the structural for uh, the chemical formula is C6H12O6, and it is going to be transported and stored in the form of glycogen. And glycogen is this huge polymer of glucose, which has glucose molecules interconnected in two uh, very common bonds. One of them is right here. This is called the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. And this one is called the alpha 1,6 glycosidic bond. Now this molecule of glycogen is very large. It is insoluble and it is typically used as a short term energy storage in the liver and the muscle. And whenever uh, glucose is needed, it is then easily converted to the glycogen is easily converted to glucose and released into the bloodstream for the muscles and and the brain or whatever other cells that need it for them to use the glucose that is stored but it is never going to be stored in the form of glucose itself it will always be stored in the form of glycogen and that is important to note moving on let's talk about the homeostatic control of glucose and homeostasis of glucose will be controlled using two hormones. That is going to be glucagon and insulin. So before we talk about those uh, hormones, we're going to have to talk about the pancreas because the pancreas and its alpha cells, more specifically, alpha cells and the beta cells, they are going to be the ones that are responsible for releasing these hormones. So the, the, the homeostatic control resides entirely inside the pancreas because the pancreas, the alpha cells and the beta cells, and these cells will be able to detect the levels of glucose that we have within our blood. So as the blood passes through the pancreas, these cells will be able to detect the concentration. And so they would be called the receptors and the control mechanisms. So how does it work? Well, the alpha cells will be secreting glucagon and the beta cells will be secreting insulin. And we're going to talk about the function of both and the mechanism of function of both of these hormones. But for now, it is important to note that the entire homeostatic control will be managed by the pancreas. They will be the detectors and the control mechanism through alpha and beta cells. Now, first, let's begin talking about the low glucose levels. What's going to happen is the alpha and the beta cells on the pancreas will be able to detect it. And what they're going to do now is they're going to produce more glucagon. So the glucagon will be released from the alpha cells at a higher rate, and there's going to be less insulin released. And because of this mechanism, the liver and, and the muscles and, and the fat cells will be able to respond accordingly. So what's going to happen within the liver is that the glucagon will be reacting with the liver. And what's going to happen is the liver is going to begin breaking down glycogen into glucose. Remember how we discussed that glycogen is our long-term or short-term storage of glucose. And so the liver stores all of that. And whenever we need more glucose, because we haven't had a meal in a while, then the glycogen will be broken down readily because of the action of glucagon. Now, another thing that's going to happen is the liver, the muscle and the fat cells will respond to less insulin by reducing the uptake of glucose. So lower uptake. And this lower uptake results in, of course, uh, a retained uh, amount of glucose within the blood. So then over time, the levels 
will continue to rise. Now, if we're talking about uh, the high concentration of glucose, so if we just ate a meal or we had something sweet, uh, we're naturally going to have a bit of a high concentration of glucose. And of course, the alpha and the beta cells will be the detectors of that. And how they're going to react is by decreasing the secretion of glucagon and increasing the secretion of insulin. And so the liver cells are going to respond by not converting the glycogen to glucose or converting it at a lower pace. So the glycogen to glucose will not be happening at the same rate. And then of course the liver, the muscle and the fat tissue will increase their uptake of glucose. Now this uptake of glucose inside uh, of these three types of tissue will increase due to the action of insulin. And so this is how the homeostatic apparatus will continue to work. Of course, there's, there's always going to be an imbalance for some time before the system will level out. As long as the system continuously adjusts to it, then we are going to create homeostasis. Now, one misconception that most students might have is that a lot of these mechanisms will just continue to have a flat line, meaning that the levels will not fluctuate. Fluctuations will always occur because as soon as you eat a meal, the hormones cannot be active and, and they cannot act immediately right on the spot, right? The hormones have to first circle around and they first have to affect the liver, they have to uh, have an effect on the muscle, have an effect on the fat tissue all over the body in order for, for either a decrease or an increase in glucose to occur. So let's first begin talking about the action of insulin. And the action of insulin will be primarily attributed to uh, the time when we have a high concentration of glucose. And in order to reduce that concentration, we are gonna have insulin floating around. And so the insulin will cause a reaction cascade, which will stimulate several things to happen. One of the ones that is depicted here is that it will stimulate the GLUT4 glucose transporter to now be fused with the membrane of the cell, either the liver or, or muscle or fat tissue that will now have lots of GLUT4 uh, transporters. Well, GLUT4 specifically referring to muscle, but we would also have uh, GLUT2 in uh, the liver, and we would have GLUT1 in the brain. And so uh, all of these uh, transporters will now be on the surfaces of the membranes, which will then be able to absorb all of this glucose. So all of these little particles here, all of these dots, are glucose. It will be able to be uptaken inside the cell, therefore lowering the concentration of glucose in the blood. And so that's, that's one thing that it does. Another thing is that it stimulates a glucokinase enzyme. And what this glucokinase enzyme does is it phosphorylates glucose. So the glucose that, that has been uptaken by these cells will now be phosphorylated. And when it is phosphorylated, it cannot pass through the GLUT transporters. So uh, due to its change in conformation, its change in shape, because it's now phosphorylated, now the glucose will not be able to get out and it's basically going to be trapped inside the cell. So it cannot diffuse back into the blood. Now, another thing that happens is the insulin will be able to stimulate, and this is specifically in the liver, it will be able to stimulate the uh, PFK, so phosphofructokinase enzyme, and glycogen synthase. And so the stimulation of these two uh, enzymes is going to build glycogen by adding more and more glucose. So it's going to increase the storage. And this specifically occurs in the liver as the liver is, is an organ that stores a lot of things. And it's going to store the glucose that is circulating around in the blood through the action of, of these two enzymes. And these two enzymes will convert the glucose to glycogen, our storage unit. And so there's three things that are happening. Number one is we are going to have transporters, the GLUT transporters, going into the surface 
receptors in order to accumulate that glucose and take it up from the blood. The second thing that occurs, and this is not in the specific order, this is just the way I'm labeling it. Another thing that occurs is going to be the stimulation of glucokinase enzyme that phosphorylates glucose, which prevents it from leaving the cell. And finally, it also stimulates two other enzymes, phosphofructokinase, PFK, and glycogen synthase in the liver, which will stimulate the building of glycogen by adding these glucose molecules on and on into it. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the action of glucagon and how it does its job of increasing the uh, glucose levels in the blood. So glucagon is specific for liver. It binds to liver. It only has receptors in the liver. It does not have an effect on any other type of tissue because only the liver has a specific receptor for it with, along with the G protein and along with these other enzymes. So we're not going to go through this uh, cascade because it, it is again it is outside the scope of the IMAT but what's important to understand here is that the glucagon is going to bind to a membrane receptor on the cell and is going to uh, catalyze the breakdown of glycogen into glucose so we're gonna go glycogen into glucose and of course glycogen is stored inside the liver and all these stores of glycogen will be done through uh, will be broken up through the action of glucagon and, and this is done by a reaction cascade just like the same uh, sort of mechanism as the function of insulin and what's going to happen is because of the high concentration of glucose inside the cell the glucose is going to begin diffusing out of the cell because we're going to continuously build up glucose and as you can see here the glycogen will finally at the end of this cascade the glycogen will be transformed into glucose and the concentration of it will grow now because of the increased concentration of glucose inside the, these liver cells it is going to diffuse out into the blood tissue and therefore increase the concentration of glucose in the blood. Now, uh, the, the effects could also be stimulated by something called gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is simply the production of glucose using amino acids and lipids. And again, this mechanism will occur within the liver. The final thing to point out is that the, this whole mechanism of glucose control or glucose homeostasis is a negative feedback loop. So when we're talking about a negative feedback loop, what I mean by that is it's, it's a self-regulating system of homeostasis. In, a, in this negative feedback loop, the increased output from the system inhibits future production by the system. So an increased output by the, the alpha and the beta cells will inhibit the future production of that because it will create an overspike, so to speak. And so the body just reduces the amount of certain proteins or hormones it creates when their levels get too high. So when we are continuously releasing glucagon and uh, releasing insulin less and less, eventually that blood level of glucose is going to change, right? And then we will have to revert that. And that is what's called a negative feedback loop. And, and this mechanism is one of the most common mechanisms that's used to control homeostasis of various systems within our body. So this concludes today's video on homeostasis of glucose control. In the next video, we are going to take a look at hormones.